Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Century. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Lethal Weapon, as well as the latest episode of Bull. Like always, if I'm talking about something that you don't want to listen to, you can always look in the description down below. I glue the time and I start talking about each of the respective shows. So, for example, if you want to hear what I had to say about this week's episode of Lethal Weapon, you can skip to what I had to say about this week's episode of Bull. But the first thing I'm going to talk about is this week's episode of Lethal Weapon. So, I love that this case, obviously... Um, usually the cases are kind of a little separate from the stories in certain regards, but in this case, it's like, it kind of brings all the stories together because you have, uh, the whole situation with Roger not being at home. Apparently he's been kicked out for like a week since last episode. I always kind of, they always like that. Like I said, I've talked about it before, but when like the timeline between episodes or whatever it is, the exact month, like the time between seasons, it's like, oh, it's six months. It's been six months in a show. It's like a little thing, but I always think it's kind of interesting. It's like, oh, he's been in a situation a week. Well, it's been a week since the last episode. Nevertheless, and this, and he's kind of driving uh, Riggs a little crazy, especially because Roger keeps bringing up Molly. And it's like, it's a subject Riggs doesn't really talk about because for him, it's like, no, 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 no. When it's all said and done, like me and Molly, we're good. Like, you know, it's like, yeah, she just hasn't gotten her stuff around, gotten her stuff that she left. And Roger's like, because you're avoiding her, which even in a conversation uh, Riggs ends up having with Cahill because he tries to make it seem like, no, 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 no. Me and Molly, we're good. You know, it's like we flow in and out of people, each other's lives. It's not going to be that big of a deal. But even Cahill's like, Riggs, I can tell even you don't believe your own BS on this situation. And it's just, we know why he's keeping her in the distance. Even he's bringing it up. It's like, yeah, how do I bring up the fact is my dad killed your son's dog? And just, you know, it's like, it's like, it's better if I just say nothing. But it's like saying nothing is worse than tell. I mean, it's just the same thing as telling a lie. Like, but it's just in Riggs' own way. It's a combination of he just wants to protect her and he's just he's scared because he doesn't want his life coming in and destroying theirs. And it's understandable why Molly would be pissed. It's like we've known each other for such a long time, but you've never hurt me the way you did this in this situation. Like breaking our heart. She didn't bring it up, but that was an aspect she brought up too. Like, you know, like the most important thing to her, like even above their relationship, the most important thing that will come first is Ben because he's her world and her everything. And I'm surprised that's not something she threw in his face, but it's just kind of like, you know, but I guess it's kind of like, okay, you come in and out of his life, so it's, I'm not going to bother worrying about it. What she worried about the most is like what you did to me, like how you left me feeling. Um, because he, you know, he played kind of that fatherly role for a little bit, and it's like, you don't get that close to my son, and then just, it's, like I said, that was an angle that wasn't even brought up, but more so it focused on her, like I said, maybe it's kind of a mentality of like, well, no, like, any man that just comes in and out of my life, I'm not worried about it, my son doesn't, it's not, I'm not asking him to think of the new guy in our life that might enter our life as his new dad or something like that, so I guess it's not even a worry or concern in her case, so... Well, at the same time, Roger's dealing with the whole Trish thing because Trish is, you know, even inviting Avery over to be like, yo, like the fact of the matter is I want you to tell me how miserable Roger is. And so you can go back and tell him how good I'm doing without him and stuff like that. And Roger's trying to treat this like a battle of attrition. It's like, oh, Trish is going to realize soon enough that, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, like that she's going to take me back and everything. And I also love the fact is that Scorsese is the only person that's super open to the idea of like, Oh, sure. Come on, Roger. You can stay at my place. He's the only one, but like, you know, you see Roger kind of making excuses. He brings up the fact that Scorsese has cats. I don't know if that's really an issue, whether he was just making excuses. He asked Avery, and Avery was like, he was like, oh, yeah, didn't you and Todd just start making um, changes to your places? Like, oh, Bailey, oh, tell me all about the case. What? Oh, come on. We'll, we'll find something else about this case. Making any excuse he can not to be in that situation. Um, Riggs even asking Bailey, and Bailey's like, ha, 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 no. He's like, well, what you want to, you know, uh, take your mentor in? It's just like, no, that's uh, more, probably more trouble than she can, it's willing to take on. So I also appreciate this episode kind of being another episode and you've seen them bickering back and forth, like about the, you know, the place and everything and just everything that's happening. Roger kind of doing this, cooking stuff. I mean, it's like, I don't want the place smelling like fish and stuff like that. Well, basically, this all ends up revolving around the case because it revolves, in, in particular, it involves a, um, contractor named Sam, which I'll admit, he kind of got brutal, he got murdered in a pretty brutal way, where like a forklift smashed the wall and stabbed him, I was like, that sucks, also, he died with his pants around his ankle, so that's not good, um, and I also love the fact that people kept throwing, like, you know, you have, like, rigs throwing shade towards, 
uh, Roger being like, oh, look at this guy. Like, he got kicked out by his wife. Hmm. He died with his pants off, off or around his ankles. Oh, two for two for you, Roger. And you even have Avery when the lady's talking about, oh, the fact is that things kind of go wrong because a lady that was with him is like, oh, like she got caught up in that situation just because things didn't work out in her life. And it's like, oh, yeah, man, it's, 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 I'm like, oh, that's a, thing that we, you know, that's a lesson that could be learned, and Roger's like, Trish isn't going to end up like him, and, and Avery's like, what the hell are you talking about? I'm not talking about Trish, Trish will be perfectly fine, basically saying, I'm talking about you, Roger, you're an idiot. On multiple occasions, even Riggs being like, apologize to your wife, like, they've been telling him over and over again, but he just won't back down, because he's just like, oh, I don't want to give up my leverage, like I said, he feels like he's on the winning side for the first time or something. I haven't felt so bad about, like, her, like, that they ended up arresting the guy. The moment, like, Roger was like, man, I feel like this is, I don't know, the name of this whole situation, uh, this this place, uh, Butler and all that, it's like, it sounds familiar, and I was like, this has to do with Trisha's, like, uh, job, the deal that she's putting through that she mentioned to Avery, isn't it? Lo and behold, it turns out to be the case. And it turns into a whole situation. And the guy was like, her boss was like, oh, I want to blow up this building because you know, obviously the building needs to be demolished, but also blowing it up. It's like, oh, it's one of my lists. And the dude that they're um, trying to arrest is struggling and ends up bumping into the button. It's like, honestly, that wasn't Roger and them's fault. But because him and Trisha are in, in that heated moment, she's thinking like, oh, you did it on purpose. It's like, no, we really didn't. If you want to blame anyone, blame the dude that was struggling. If he, I don't know, you know, he's kind of being a dick about it. Like he didn't have to be struggling so hard like that. So he's the one that should, could kind of have to pay for it. But then it turns into a whole situation of like, okay, we got to make some restitution. So uh, Riggs and Roger are working to keep the dude that she's trying to be, make the deal with Butler, trying to keep him um, there. And so that Trish can like pull the um, deal through because he was backing out because everything that kind of went down. But he kind of took a liking to Riggs. And so Riggs brings Molly into it, which Molly wasn't all that pleased about talking to Riggs. But it's like, hey, I need your help. This would also help boost your business. Even going as far as returning her box to her and everything. So she reluctantly accepts. So it's like, hey, Riggs and Roger are using this as an opportunity to make things good. Between Riggs, whether he'll admit it or not, he'll be like, oh, this is just, you know, an opportunity for, uh, you know, um, Molly, you know, just her to help herself, but ultimately, you know, obviously it's meant to kind of bridge the gap between them a little bit, the bridge that he created, obviously, and for Roger, it's for him to kind of get out of doghouse, and even Trish was like, zero shenanigans, and Roger's like, no shenanigans, and she's look, she looks right at Riggs, and I'm like, say it, and he's like, yep, zero shenanigans, it's like, you better not mess this up, no, you better not mess this up, and ultimately everything kind of turned to, um, literal shit, just things kind of blew up in their faces, in a sense, luckily, on both fronts, because if Molly had gotten involved with this guy, this guy's connected to drugs and everything, we ultimately find out. And it probably wouldn't have been a very good look for Trish or her boss if it's like, oh, you ended up getting in bed with this particular guy, Butler. So, interesting enough, is the actor who plays Tom on Beyond. Like I said, I, I, this is so interesting. I've been seeing him a lot lately and other stuff. I saw him in some Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. episodes, and I'm seeing him in this. I think I could have sworn there was something else I recently saw him in, but maybe I'm blanking. Maybe it's just those two, um, this and... Into the show, but nevertheless, I did appreciate the fact is like Trish was kind of like I think it played into Trish's reluctance to believe in him. I mean, also it's just because you know the lawyer inside of Trish is like you don't have any actual concrete evidence that what they have is at circumstantial or you know theories about how like oh he could be connected to the drug game. But she heard the conversation, she's like, shoot. The question is, I, I was kind of I meant to uh, put in there is like if her and Roger weren't kind of at odds right now, would well, she been a lot more in? in bed to believe in him, you know, in bed. I don't know why I phrased that like that. I don't know. It sounds it's just what she would basically would she have believed him more if they weren't under the circumstances they were. Uh, I thought it was pretty neat that she ended up ultimately talking herself out of it. I had a feeling the moment to get under there's like Trish isn't up there, is she? And it's like, no, it turns out she's not because she's a very good smooth talker. So she able to kind of fudge some stuff and make it like, oh, like I'm not suspicious. Oh, like, like I'm not even on to the fact is that you're connected. You're a very bad guy. You had a guy killed and, you're part of this drug game and everything. But what really took me by surprise was the situation on the plane. The plane going down like that. I can't believe... It's just funny to me those words came out of Roger's mouth of being like, the fact is I should get the parachute because I have more to live for. I have a family. You, Riggs, you have nothing. You have nobody. And then Riggs is like, well, maybe I want that. And he's like, well, you're talking about this whole like situation with Molly? Yeah, he's like, yeah, the wife, child, you know, white picket fence, that, you know, basically all American dream. And it's like, 
And then Roger's like, you know what, Riggs, you deserve that. He's like, yeah, I, I do deserve that. I just thought that's going to be a beautiful thing. Because talking to Cahill made, because even he realized in this episode, he's like, I, I mess, mess things up. I'm going to mess up something that was good, something that was real. And he's like, because he recognized, like, things weren't getting good between him and Molly. In fact, they kind of fell apart. Mainly, first, first everything between them. Then there's the rib situation, which could have been a good business opportunity for her. And then there's the whole chicken situation. It was just one thing sat upon each other. Just, like, him kind of screwing up on top of screwing up. And even Riz, like I said, recognizing it's like, I just I did what I normally do. I ruin everything. But Cahill's like, the fact of the matter is, everyone deserves a second chance, you know? And it's like... What do you want? Like, he's like, I kind of want to be with Molly. It's like, if that's what makes you happen, then you have to go for it. And it seems like that is where his mindset is. But going back to him and Roger, it's like, they're passing it back and forth. It's like, no, you take it. No, you take it. It flies out the window. It flies out the jet. Okay, it's like, so what do we do? All right, I guess we have no choice. We're going to have to, like, I'll go grab, well, I'll push you out. And then while I'm going to grab it, I'll come back and get you. It is like, what? And does that, which looks pretty sick. And it just, it kind of makes you go, <sighs> breathe a little heavy. I think it's also because there's a part of me that, you know, I think it's also the side of me that has a fear of heights. I'm kind of like, ugh, uneasy about that whole situation. But that was pretty badass of Riggs doing that. Um, I wasn't expecting things that kind of go down on that. I kind of feel bad for Butler. I mean, to be fair, he's a criminal and everything. But, um... I mean, yeah, under the circumstances, he could have killed Trish if he thought she really didn't do anything. Which you could tell that's what he was kind of alluding to, because he thought she had things figured out until she kind of talked her way out of the situation. So, there's that. But it's like, I was like, oh, I thought y'all were going to try and get him off of the plane, too. It's like, oh, no. Uh, he's a, uh, him and his men up there, even though they never talked about it. It's like, yeah, that plane, you know, that plane definitely crashed and they died on her. And so that kind of sucks. But it's like, uh, luckily, the cops were able to take what they know. I think it was like the FBI or whatever took the whole situation in this case and it's now able to hit all these different uh spots that are connected to this whole drug game that he kind of got mixed up in um because all his businesses were basically um built on top of like i think in this particular case it was like on top of an old was an old subway railroad tunnel or something like that so that they can kind of you know uh kind of just what traffic drugs would be like the proper name t titling for it nevertheless Everything kind of ends well on some fronts. Roger's front, everything ends aces. Do him and Trish are good. She's like, the fact of the matter is you jumped out of plane for me. Because she realized like, hey, you are the only reason why you got on that plane in the first place. Because you thought I was up there. You were trying to protect me. Trying to save me. And at the same time, you jumped out that plane because you wanted to make sure that you live. And came back to me. You, know, you tried to do whatever you could to come back to me and the kids. So, yeah. So they're apologizing, and it's like, oh, we're not going to dig in deep anymore. We're going to try and let stuff go. I'm curious to see how long that lasts, but I think this is going to be a big turn for them that maybe Roger is, because I'm, I'm sure in Roger's eyes now, it's like, oh, I've kind of taken everything for granted. I've been caught up in my, so much of my own bullshit, which he has, and he's kind of taken this family for granted. Like, oh, they'll take me back. It's like, you almost didn't have that chance. Like, that choice and chance was almost taken from you. So it's one of those situations where it's like you learn and grow from it. So I'm curious to see where there would be a little backlash from this going for whether it be like him kind of backstepping a little bit but kind of have to resteady himself like no 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 or will we kind of see a difference between his relationship and trisha's going forward like i don't know like i said it's just it's just kind of interesting like i said it's, i brought this up last episode too it's just one of those situations where it's like the main argument that started all of this isn't even a part of the equation anymore. Because remember, this all started because he was risking his life. And Trish didn't like him risking his life trying to reclaim his youth. Even It's kind of having a, like a midlife crisis type of thing. And it's like, that it isn't even part of the equation anymore. Because it's that situation. Once you've been mad at you, each other for so long, you kind of forget why you were mad in the first place. So, I think that just adds, I don't know, it adds a nice element to it. So, and then obviously the other side of things are between Riggs and Molly. Riggs finally apologizes, which is the whole the biggest problem is like you waited this long. If you had just told me from the beginning, like explain like why you were trying to walk away and apologize, then we could have been good. But but he finally explains it's like okay, the reason I walked away is because my dad killed Ben Zog. It's like and you didn't really need to tell me once again, I'm trying to protect her. And she's like basically his dad's always kind of put like a shadow over his life because. And she knows more so than anyone. She's one of the few people that does know because she knows what kind of life Riggs had because she's known him for so long. So she's telling Riggs to kind of, you know, how are you going to live your life if you're always going to have your dad kind of casting a shadow of you? And even Riggs kind of like, I don't know. 
I am curious to see what he will do in that situation. It does seem like Molly is in the steps of forgiving him. It's just like, if you just told me from the beginning, we could have been good. Like, you know, maybe we could have found a way around this or together, you know. So, I am curious to see what ultimately he would do. Because I don't even think, like, I think the only person who knows the truth about why he walked away from Molly is Kayo. Because I'm pretty sure even Roger doesn't know. I mean, it never came up or whatever. I think it's just a situation, you know, like, because Cahill's one of the few people uh, Riggs opens up to. Eventually, he opens up to other people, but usually it takes time. But it also, because it's like, because the whole situation could also piss Molly off, too. It's like, you're treating me like anyone else. Because we've known each other for so long, that that, that kind of guarantees me a little bit more that you don't shut me out when this type of thing happens. So, I don't know, like, overall, it's just a great episode with just everything that went into it. Just, like, everything coming together like that. Across both, like, both their stories coinciding with the main case like that. Um, obviously, there's a little, obviously, like I said, that happens in time to time where it's like, oh, their personal lives kind of interfere with the case in some shape or form. But it's just interesting that both of their lives in this particular case kind of got connected on this one. So, uh, like I said, I am the thing I'm curious the most about besides whether, you know, Roger really learned from the situation, not just him, like him and Trish, like how that, you know, obviously, hopefully they grow from the situation. You know, people have spats. They're just things that kind of come up in any relationship. What what matters is how you handle it. So be interesting to see how they handle it going forward. Um, like I said, for now, it looks like everything's good. Everything's golden against. So, uh, like I said, I think it's so interesting that that's like a little arc that it wasn't just like a one off thing. So that's pretty neat. And then, you know, also, like I said, how Riggs is going to handle situations going forward with his father, which I think that's going to be something that's kind of swinging back over into, like, the main focus of the story going forward. So, we will just have to wait and see what goes on in the next episode. And now moving on to this week's episode of Bull, a very interesting episode. I love the whole premise behind this episode in particular, like obviously this being a case that's actually kind of important to Bull. It's something I've talked about in the past too. It's like I always like it when cases are kind of very personal to Bull. In this particular, it's a case that Bull kind of dealt with well in the past, apparently roughly nine years ago. Basically, it deals with a guy named Derek. Derek was hanging out with some friends, went to a bar, left with a girl. They didn't really do anything. It's a little making out, but then they went their separate ways. She was found dead later on. Like a lot, a lot of terrible shit happened uh, to her. Her name was Ashley. And basically, uh, the cops basically coerce a confession out of uh, Derek kind of switching and so, like kind of doing a lot of stuff. It's like, and it's kind of interesting that they even like pointed out in the episode, they're kind of like, oh yeah, cops, at least in New York, at least in the confines of the show, can lie to you to a certain extent, kind of kind of tell you whatever they need to tell you um, to kind of get, which is kind of interesting, which kind of seems like, Wow, that's really, like, legal? That's so interesting. And that's even something that Bull kind of goes about later on, like, that they legally, like, got him to confess. Like, yeah, they they were super shady circumstances, but legally, in the eyes of the law, they went about it the right way. So, basically, Bull's kind of got this case reopened, and, like, well, basically, he wants to try and get Derek a second trial, try to get the original confession, um kind of thrown out, but he can't get it thrown out, but he does get the second trial. Um, it's kind of, it's almost sad because when Derek hears him, it's like, oh yeah, it's okay. You know, do whatever you want to because the fact of the matter is, I'm, you know, this is either a dream or I'm already dead, kind of like whatever. So he kind of has given up hope already because it puts him in a mat and like, it's something he ended up talking with Chunk about. It's like, oh yeah, like, there's part of him that has to live every day knowing that he didn't do this. But there's also part of him that's like, no, no, I had, like, he, there's parts of himself that has to convince himself, oh, I actually did do it. Because it's like, why else would I be in jail? And they wouldn't throw an innocent man in jail. And it's just kind of like, Phew. So basically everything's kind of stacked against him because most people already, like, oh, he, he went to jail for it. So obviously he is guilty. So everyone's got, got their preconceived notions about it. Um, it's, it's got the same judge and the same prosecutor kind of stacking against him. Um, uh, probably like the MVP of the episode has got to hands down be freaking uh, Benny. I always love it when Benny goes in on people. Like he went on, he went on in into the cop about like everything that he did and kind of because his moments like you you kind of agree with the jury. The jury's kind of go oh and like to some of the stuff that Benny's bringing up and even I'm going Whoo, tear him in a new one. Even Paul's like I love it when Benny does that because it's like he he's showing you how good Benny is at his job when he's basically taking everything that the cops ever kind of used to kind of 
used against Derek and kind of using it against him and be like, mm, well, isn't this a little messed up? Isn't this kind of, like, because it's like, oh, you literally spent like literally less than 45 minutes making the decision that you wanted it to be Derek. That you, it's like, oh, what did you do? You showed up to crime scene. Oh, you saw the videotape. You went home, got a little rest, came back, saw that he was on the tape with the victim. And then just kind of like, oh yeah, who cares about what he said? Even if they did a little making out, what if they did go separate ways? What's to say he didn't do it? It's like super messed up. I'm like, that sucks, dude. And it's something, um, I forgot, what was the exact term that boy used? My side bias. Basically, that didn't, like, because I was wondering that myself. I was like, why were these cops going after him so hard? Was it was it purely for the, be like, okay, we got the case solved, yada, yada, yada? Or is it like the situation of, like, did they have some personal vendetta against him? I was even thinking, like, were they the ones behind it? So they were stacking the case against him just to kind of screw him to kind of cover up the fact that they did something shady? It's like, no, it's just in their mind, they've already got it set. Like, oh, he's the bad guy. Let's take all the evidence that proves that he's the bad guy and just use that, focus on it. What about the evidence that contradicts? that now nah, who cares it's not important we got our guy but you don't we because it's like because there's even a point during the um trial like it's like um benny's like oh yeah you know he was your number one suspect and the prosecutor's like he never said he was their no that derek was their number one suspect and then the cop's like oh yeah he was our number one suspect and you almost see the prosecutor go Shh. you almost see him go you he's like almost like he wants to say you idiot and as he's sitting down it's like even he admits it kind of the bias in that situation it's like there is that other side, because it's like, because literally it happened the next day, because even I'm like, really? You got him, like, the next day, and you're already, like, grilling him like that? It's like, you would, like, even to the point, like, he was signing stuff, I was like, wait, what is he doing writing Derek's name like that? And it's like, oh, yeah, and he's like, oh, yeah, the victim, she wrote your name that she couldn't really talk to us, but uh, she worked, I'm like, wow, because even Benny throws it up later on, which I knew it was a little a lie at the time, but we find out even more, because Benny announces it to everyone, it's like, the victim had already died after, but by the time you started investigating, by the time you got the case, she was already dead, so that note you showed him, taking a man who was already in a like nervous condition because because they're mess messing with his head because it's like well no I didn't do it but it's like could you can you say for certain that you didn't do it I mean you were on drugs I mean yeah I'm pretty sure I would remember I remember everything else it's like do you really maybe I should leave well if you did leave it wouldn't look too good on you so it's like all these little things and it's like oh, it sucks I mean ultimately it's what made the case feel so much better because you're like yeah he's an innocent dude that didn't deserve to um, be in jail what's kind of interesting about this whole case too is the way it's showcased even the way Bull kind of talked about it it's because no one else at their at they knew of the case a little bit after certain details came up but it's like basically all those years ago I can only assume Bull was working that by himself so he really hadn't built up the whole tax situation it might have been something he was working on by himself Marissa knew ahead of time at the, at the beginning, like, oh, what case in particular he was kind of referencing. But then again, I guess it's a situation of like, um, he probably filled her in on the details earlier on. Maybe she worked with him back then. But I think it was more so than anything, Bull worked it by himself way back then. So, you know, because he tried the whole trial science thing and kind of failed him. And it kind of bothered him because it's like, but now like the whole aspect of like, oh, uh, dental um, bite marks can't be used as viable evidence anymore that like it's not 100% like a smoking gun type of uh, bit of evidence essentially it's kind of what was going to be brought up in this case which was that part of this whole situation because I don't remember at any point in time like I'm mean, there I guess I guess it played some part in a case or something like that but it's like I don't remember it being like ever really talked about that he actually like bit her or whatever so I don't know I guess that was kind of like a situation to call I guess it was kind of a precursor. It's like that was all happening, so it made Bull go, well, the fact of the matter is since certain evidence is kind of being looked at very differently now, like, let, let's look back on this case differently. Like all those things that kind of handled back then, we looked at it one way. Well, now the time has passed. Technology is going a little bit further. We got a little more wiser. Why don't we try and see if that everything really kind of holds up to the current standards of like the way the law stands right now, you know? I guess that was kind of the main point because I was like, I kept thinking to myself, like, where does the whole teeth situation come into play? Because you even had the beginning of the episode or boils like you know there's fundamental things that just are like you know water is water and your no teeth marks are all the same that even if they're similar there are always going to be difference between one mouth to another you know so I was wondering what that was all about but I, I guess that's my understanding of it not unless there was an, a whole teeth aspect to this case that I'm completely blanking on or missing but that's how I was interpreting that so what I also thought was kind of a nice uh, situation was the whole situation with the whole um, well David's future essentially because it's like the prosecutor came to him and was like hey uh, 
we'll cut you a deal. All you have to do is change your plea to guilty, and you you would make it so that your time is served, so you never have to spend any more time in jail. It's like, oh, that's good. But by pleading guilty, he will be admitting that he did kill Ashley, and that will stay with him forever. But even if he does say, if he decides to go ahead and continue with the trial and everything, there's a good chance that you know, with the things way things are, it could be a mistrial. Things could kind of restart. Maybe things won't play out in their favor you know like different factors and stuff like that so but for david it's like no i'm not going to take that deal i'm not going to admit if i if i had done it okay that'd be me feeling like i got away with something because like oh yeah i did a bad thing but i'm getting away from it by pleading guilty who cares but now i'm not i have to go and spend more time in jail yeah i get something out of it but this i didn't do it and i'm not going to say i did it because i want my name back you know because it's like for him he feels like you know and it kind of plays into the episode of like everyone kind of like i said everyone walking into it kind of thinking he did it i think the think the numbers of like jurors wasn't it like nine to three or something like that on people who thought nine nine or eight who thought he did it and three who were kind of open to because that was kind of something bull was aiming for in this episode jury members who were kind of willing to look at other possibilities they kind of played into it because like everyone's kind of got their preconceived notions just like the cops did in this episode like they already had it in head oh he's guilty he's guilty he's guilty but the fact of the matter is other people like he wanted more people in the jury to kind of like oh like maybe have a little bit more open-mindedness to at least be willing to venture out other possibilities you know to kind of be impartial like a cop is supposed to be like okay i might lean this other way but hey let's look at some other suspects you know until you know so and they would have realized that it was Josh all along, so... Which kind of sucks, because more so than... Like, the person that ended up doing this was one of his friends. In fact, the one that kind of got him to take the drugs in the first place. I'm sure it wasn't, like, something he was planning on doing. I don't think that whole situ situation was planned. It was just a situation of, like... I don't know. He was just... He's a terrible human being, and he did a terrible thing. So, I guess we just, like, chalk it up and leave it at that. Just leave it at him being a terrible human being. Don't try and justify because it it's not worth just, you know, there's nothing to justify about it, you know, so. But, like I said, ultimately everything worked out, especially with Bull uh, manipulating Josh into admitting everything he did because it's like, oh, we found some evidence on you when in actuality they didn't. They didn't get the results from his DNA until after Bull had already kind of tricked him into confessing for what he did. So, in a sense, it was basically him pulling on um, Josh what the cops pulled on um, uh, Derek. So, but luckily, Derek kind of seems like it probably won't be easy, but at least, you know, life is kind of taking the steps it's needed to things kind of getting repaired. Like his sister being there at the end because he had cut everyone out of his life. Um, he hadn't really contacted Bull. He stopped contacting his family, telling them to stop coming. But, you know, it just, you know, I'm glad that at least, you know, his sister was there when it was all said and done because uh, uh, Trunk was able to track her down. So he didn't have, you know, that there's at least some semblance of his life still being, you know, OK when it was all said and done. So it's one of those just super shitty situations that, I mean, like I said, luckily it had a happy ending. So it's also one of those situations I kind of brought up in the past before. It's one of those things where we rarely see Bull fail. And it's one of those instances of him because it was even David. Was, I mean, not David. Derek was like, hey, thank you. For, uh, and he's like, no, I should be thanking you because you gave me a second chance. It's kind of what like Bull kind of looked at because like I failed you before, but you gave me a second chance. So thank you. Um, so that was kind of neat. Um, a little side thing that I kind of like that uh, Danny keeps being the perpetuator of it. Like, oh yeah, you know, this side of things will usually be handled by, you know, cable. So, but there's still no, uh, you know, cable replacement. So it's like, and Bull's kind of like, no, don't worry about it. I, we, we handled things before cable came and we'll handle them afterwards, you know. So until we find a replacement, which I'm kind of interested in the fact is that we still haven't found a replacement yet. I'm sure that you could look at it as some like underlining thing. Maybe Marissa's taking her time. And maybe she's giving Bull excuses to it. Maybe because even she feels bad about him. I don't know. Uh, but you even have Danny kind of throwing it back in Bull's face too. It's like, oh yeah, you know, I got this information. I mean, usually this is Cable's territory. And you see Bull kind of roll his eyes and turn to Marissa. And Marissa's just kind of smiling and kind of shrugging. So I just like that Danny's the only one that keeps throwing the whole like Cable situation in his face. Like, Cable... Cable, yeah, this is something that Cable would take care of. Mm, yeah, I know, I'm kind of stepping in Cable's territory. It's just like, okay, Danny, I love it, I love it. Uh, but also another side of this episode I thought was kind of interesting too was the Chunk side, just kind of a little side story of him dealing with the whole Anna situation. And I'd completely forgotten about the storyline, and it's, they even referenced it in the episode. We haven't tackled this since the Thanksgiving situation of like, oh yeah, he like Anna grew up thinking that 
Chunk was her uncle. Turns out he's actually her dad. And even he's talking, it's like, oh yeah, it's your uncle Chunk. Well, you know, your dad. And the fact is he brought that up in conversation means that he openly must have admitted it to everyone on the team. It makes you wonder, is it something that came up after he had told Anna that he told them to, that he told her the truth? Did he tell that to everyone? Or did everyone already know and he just finally decided, okay, I'm going to tell Anna the truth on Thanksgiving. Obviously, she's kind of been avoiding him, so he was kind of worried about it. I, even, I thought the whole episode was going to be kind of designed like that, where it's like that whole chunk dream sequence where it's kind of like a music video and everything. I was like, that's so weird. Like, legitimately, the way it was designed like that, it reminds me of the show Limitless, because the Limitless kind of had like a little thing where it would kind of like change up the way the episodes are represented like that. I thought we were aiming in a, a direction like that. I was like, oh, I thought the entire episode was going to be something like that. I was like, oh, that'd be kind of unique, but it's like, no, it was just that one section. So, it was just kind of neat. I mean, it turns out Anna's okay. Like, uh, she's actually excited to meet with Chunk up, meet up with Chunk again. It's just a little weird and awkward because it's like, oh, you're my uncle, but now you're, I've actually found out you're actually my dad. She's a little mad because he kept it from her, but at the same time, it's just like, you know, it, it kind of seems like a lot of Chunk's worries have drifted away. So, like I said, it was just kind of a nice uh, side plot that I'm glad that they kind of like, you know, brought back. Like I said, because I'd completely forgotten about that, even though it was only like a couple episodes back. Like I said, the Thanksgiving episode, and it hasn't actually been that long, you know, since then. So, I mean, overall, a great episode. Um, I'm very interested to see what, you know, where everything kind of heads in the next episode. Obviously, because we're going to be continuing this whole cable train. And I'm curious, will we actually ever get a cable replacement? Will there never be one? Or will we get one? And if what if cable meets her? What if it's someone that cable knew that's replacing her? What if they get a new cable and she's not like cable? I mean, that person isn't like cable. I said she because, I mean, could be a, a dude too. Uh, but uh, what that person's not like cable is not well recepted. I, I feel like the person that probably won't accept them as quickly is probably Danny because she's the one that's kind of still the most kind of upset about the situation. And I mean, like everyone, like we already know everyone is upset, but she's the one that's kind of being the most vocal about it. So, I mean, especially because Bull kind of been like, yeah, I don't want to hear any more conversations about this old cable situation. To be fair, then last week's episode was probably a lot fresher. Now a little bit more time has gone by. So I don't know. We'll ultimately have to wait and see what goes down uh, going forward. So. But really, that's all I want to talk about in this episode. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.